Okay. So we should be live now. I'm going to give it a few minutes for people to join. Okay. Welcome everyone. Feel free to say hi in the chat so you can see who's with us today. We'll get started in a couple minutes, give everyone a chance to get settled in. Hi, Robert. Hi, Susanna. Hi, Vivi. Thanks for joining. Hi, Ian. Thanks for joining Natalia, good to see you. Hey Annette. Okay, I'll give it one more minute. Okay, I think it's probably a good time to get started now. Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us um, this Wednesday midday. I hope you're all doing well and keeping well during this lockdown and are as excited as we are at Urban to be reopening and getting getting back to, to a little bit of normal um, starting from next week. Today I'm very delighted to be joined by Tamar Morsi, who a lot of you will probably already know. Um, he no. is an <laughs> urban massage therapist amongst many, many other impressive accolades, um, but I'll let him introduce himself properly once we get started with the presentation. Um, so today's session is called the art of body mechanics in massage and we'll be running for approximately an hour um, and there'll be kind of different sections of the of the session um, led by Tama. Um, so whilst Tama is presenting or demonstrating please feel free to add any questions in the chat on on the side and I'll be keeping track of all of those throughout the presentation um, but we'll wait until the end to um, go through those and um, please try as much as possible to keep the questions on topic so we can have a great and productive session. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to pass it over to you now, Tama, and feel free to start sharing your screen whenever you're ready. Hi, everyone. Uh, I hope you're keeping up well. Uh, I hope uh, the lockdown is um, you're managing during the lockdown. It's, uh, it's tough times, uh, but yeah, but it's reality that we need to deal with. So uh, yeah, we can't do anything about it. Um, so today we're gonna we're gonna talk about the art of uh, body mechanics and massage. Um, uh, as Yasmin said, it's um, it's a very it's a very good skill uh, that once you learn it, you can apply it across all modalities of massage. Uh, the aim, the purpose of the body mechanics and massage. That's basically that's a two days course that I'm I'm teaching at my school, International Massage Education. Uh, the aim for this course is to um, save the therapist's body, uh, to, uh, to be able to not to burn out yourself, um, to be very effective in treatment, especially when it comes to uh, deep pressure, 
uh, is how to apply the deep pressure without hurting yourself, without hurting your shoulders, without hurting your lower back, without hurting your wrists. Uh, so uh, there is there is a lot to learn in this area, and unfortunately, at schools, when you learn any any new modality like deep tissue lomi lomi relaxing, um, they don't focus. They have a lot to focus on to teach in terms of the modality, the skills of how how to use the new technique that you're learning. Uh, but the lack uh, of of teaching how to use your lower body is is it makes sense because they, you don't have a lot of time, but uh, it's very important for you to learn the skill. Uh, so let me share my screen now uh, so I can um, just tell you more about myself. And uh, we'll go, we'll start explaining the body mechanics. Okay, so is um, is the presentation visible now to anyone else? Yeah, all good. Okay, all good. All right. Uh, so uh, about me, my name is Tema. I'm an urban hero, and I'm a very um, a big fan of of urban. To be honest, uh, of how how they are creating um, the opportunity to therapists to to work uh, straight away and offer a lot of um, uh, a big client client base, which allow us to do a lot of work, which is uh, brilliant. That's uh, my preference. That's my opinion about urban, whether you know it or not. Um, I am um, the founder of and director of International Massage Education, where I'm teaching. Uh, I'm teaching different courses. Um, uh, I have my own therapy business, which is called Heal of Hand, uh, and. Um, I'm managing Massage Hub. It's an online, um, a video online platform for educational massage videos. Um, I'm a co-founder of Nomad Advanced Massage Coaching. I've partnered with um, with Jack Pola, um, and we're working on delivering uh, delivering a masterclass in uh, how to deliver um, a world class massage treatment. Uh, we were supposed to teach it in Greece this year, but COVID happened, so hopefully next year. Um, I'm a lecturer at London School of Massage. I'm teaching deep tissue and trigger point at London School of Massage. Uh, and finally, I uh, am, I've won a few competitions in massage, uh, a few massage championships. Uh, in 2018, I got two awards in the UK uh, National Championship in uh, Spa Wellness category and the Advanced category. In 2019, I won third place in the European Massage Championship. Um, in 2019 as well, in June, I came in first place in the Western Inspired uh, category at the World Massage Championship. And the last one was 2019 in the UK. I won two awards. The first one was a forehand massage with another therapist. Uh, we came first in our category and uh, I came second in the advanced uh, category. Uh, regarding the championships, not, uh, not a lot of people are happy about championships and not a lot of people, and some people think that it's, um, it's, it's a bit weird or it's a bit, it's it's not valid to show to to let people judge our treatments um to be honest my opinion about that i i agree with this statement uh i have a personal belief that uh each one of us as therapists got a unique style that no one else can replicate uh we can uh, we the the massage itself it includes a lot of elements like the energy like the treatments like the physical treatment that we do uh building the rapport with the client the, the customer service that we're offering to the client so it's not only one element it's not just the 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 body work that we do it's got other elements uh, and uh, in in championships you get judged by very experienced therapists and they don't judge you for all the elements uh, they judge you for they they use certain criteria like the posture like how you're taking care of your client um, other and other they have a long list of of criteria to judge your treatment which is very valuable to be honest to our work uh, and it's always good to get a feedback from uh, from another person 
um, we always do our work without anyone watching or give us uh, giving us feedback. Um, it's always good to have a feedback. It's all it's always good to to get someone who's really experienced in massage and give us a feedback about our work. Um, again, it doesn't mean that this feedback is right, but it means that this feedback is a valid feedback that you can work on it to improve how you work. Like everything else, to be honest, in the world, everything can be improved. Uh, the question is how. And that's, that's a good way to find out how, is just to go to championships and participate. So um, one of the, one of the, of the main uh, points, uh, of the main criteria, one of the major criteria that you use in championships is the body mechanics and how you're using your body to, uh, to, to do the treatment. Um, and that's how, to be honest, I came up with this idea. Um, I'm teaching this course since last year. Um, it's, it's a unique course. So basically this course is, again, it's designed only for therapists. The client will get the benefit out of it, but it's mainly to save the therapist body. Um, and it, it, it's got a lot of benefits that we're going to go through. Um, it's all about how you move with your body, uh, whether you are delivering a, um, uh, an effleurage, whether you're delivering a petrissage, uh, whatever, which stroke you're delivering, you're stretching, you're doing an MFR, a myofascial release, it all comes from the legs, which a bit, uh, sounds a bit weird, but um, we'll, we'll go through the application of it um, moving on during the slides. Uh, learning how uh, what we're going to learn you, uh, throughout this webinar we will learn the body posture the correct body posture that we need to use in treatments we will learn about the weight shifting uh, how you shift your weight from one point to another um, which muscles to use to deliver strokes um, we we will make sure that it's very clear that we don't use our arms to deliver the strokes we're using our legs the living strokes and combined with the body weight. Uh, we're gonna learn the benefits of, of using how, how applying the pressure using the body weight um, becomes very obvious for the client, becomes very effective for the client. The client will feel it. And at the same time, you will feel it as well when you work six hours without, without getting tired, you will feel the benefits of it um and yeah and how to do it <laughs> uh, the big question who can apply more pressure uh, i i believe that most of um, most of the therapists uh, came across someone who's asking for a male therapist to apply more pressure uh, however it's uh, not um, it's not a fact that male therapists or it's not a fact that big guys can apply more pressure than smaller people uh, it, it it doesn't it doesn't work that way because it doesn't have to it's not related to the muscle mass of the body it doesn't it's not related to how 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 big my biceps is um, it's all about the weight and it's all about using how how you lean with your body over the client's body to apply the pressure um, the benefits of body mechanics is to prevent injuries, uh, injuries such as uh, wrist strains, lower back pain, shoulder and neck pain. Um, it helps you to apply more pressure with no effort at all, and that's using the body weight. Uh, it helps you to working for long hours without getting tired physically, um, and um, it maintains the quality of the treatments. So if we're talking about therapist, let's say on average, would work about four to five hours a day. Um, how, how to make sure that the quality of the first treatment while I'm still in my, um, I have my battery full, and uh, how to compare it with the quality of the last treatment where I got drained and I went through the whole day. Uh, we're talking about the physical element, but there is the mental element as well. Uh, but at least we're trying to maintain one of the elements that will help us to maintain the quality throughout the day. Uh, the last treatment of the day, the client doesn't have to pay 
the price that you're working on. So basically the client is asking for a very high quality treatment, which is a valid request. Uh, they have paid money, they have uh, spent their time, they are waiting for you. It's not to, for you to give them a bad quality treatment because you're tired of working too long hours. So um, those are the benefits of the body mechanics that it, it will help us to achieve those four points. Um, common injuries that are caused due to the bad posture uh, for therapists while they're doing massage, uh, pain in wrists and thumbs, um, that can lead to serious conditions as, like, like the TT, uh, CTS, uh, which is carpal uh, tunnel syndrome, um, neck and shoulder pain, and lower back pain, again, can lead to serious conditions such as uh, sciatica. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you has experienced those, uh, one of those um, uh, injuries before, uh, but I, I know a, a good friend of mine, she started working in, um, in massage and after about a month, she's got a very bad, uh, after she quit her job, started with during massage, after one, 30 days exactly, she had really bad uh, carpal tunnel syndrome and she can't do massage anymore for at least, I think, six months or a year, which is not a pleasant experience. So, um, and we'll try, we'll try to, to share some experience to avoid those injuries. Um, in, in general, the, the term body posture, because a lot of people are talking about it. So we're gonna go through the explanation of what is a body posture. The body posture is how, how we hold our bodies. If you're standing up, how you're, hold your, how, how you're holding your body, if you're sitting down, if you're lying down, it's all about how, how the body is. Um, if there is any strains in the joints, if, if there is any people who's got rounded shoulder, you'll find that they're leaning forward a little bit to maintain the balance so that they can stand up. Uh, sorry, they're leaning backwards because the rounded shoulder is pushing them forward. So they need to push with the low back a little bit towards the back so that they can be able to stand properly. And the good posture is when all the body parts is aligned. Um, there is no tension in any point, any muscle um, that, that is just resisting gravity. You're just going with the gravity. Um, body weight shifting. The simple, um, the simple explanation for the body weight shifting is walking. When you walk, you already are, um, you are applying the body weight shifting concept because your your body weight, while you are using the left, when your right foot is on the ground, while your left foot is not on the ground, basically all your body is focused on the right foot. However, once the left foot touches the floor, the ground, and both your feet are on the ground, you're distributing your body weight on both feet. And then, and this process happens automatically. It's just embedded in, 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 our, in our system and we are doing it uh, involuntarily. Um, and that's what we're gonna do in, we're going to apply the same, those two concepts basically to deliver treatments and massage. To be able to use the body weight properly, uh, stance is very important to know what stance you should be in, how your feet should be, the direction of your feet should be, uh, where your leading foot should be always um, facing, in which direction. So, First, first stance is the half, uh, half horse stance. Um, I'll, I'll go through the first three because they are connected. Uh, so half horse stance, bow and arrow stance, and Tai Chi stance. Basically those, if you think about an effleurage, about delivering an effleurage, uh, those three stances will be the, the first stance is how you are starting the stroke. The second, Stunts, bow and arrow is how you are reaching um, the range of the stunts, the maximum range of the stroke, sorry. And the Tai Chi stunts is when you go back to prepare yourself to deliver another stroke. And those three stunts are usually uh, involved in any, any dynamic stroke. 
which involves a body movement. The other two stunts are the horse stunts, which is usually if you are using trigger point or you're working on a knot, you'll find that you, you'll be, the horse stunts is the best stunts to use to apply the pressure on one point. And the tiger stunts is very useful when it comes, very effective when it comes to pulling a body part for stretching. So those four five, uh, five stunts, those are at any point in massage treatment, you should be in one of those stunts. Let's say the majority of the time, because sometimes we get, uh, if the space is not, uh, if we don't have enough room around us, uh, that will, that will, will push us to change our body position. But it's, um, we're talking about that you have enough space around you. Those five stunts, majority of the time, you should be in one of them. If you're not, then you, uh, I, I don't believe that you'd be, a, you'd be applying your body weight uh, properly to deliver the massage. Um, the type of strokes in general, we have two types of strokes. We have the dynamic strokes, uh, which, uh, which as I mentioned before, involve a body movement. And we've got the static stroke, um, which doesn't involve a body movement. Um, the types of the dynamic strokes or examples of the dynamic strokes is effleurage, uh, petrissage, ringing, kneading. Uh, those four examples are always involving body movement. Your body should be rocking or moving to deliver one of those strokes. The static strokes are uh, examples of the static strokes are stretching. Uh, stretching, you grab a body part, let's say an arm or a leg, and you go, you, you reach the, the maximum range of motion for the leg. And basically you stay there for about 10 seconds or the time that you, um, that you decide is better for the client. Uh, so that most likely doesn't involve body movement because once you get the, the maximum range of movement, you stay there. And the ischemic compression, the ischemic compression is, uh, is used to deal with knots um, and trigger points. Uh, those, two, those two strokes, again, they don't involve body, body movement, a lot of body movement. You get in one position, you stay there for about 5, 10, 20 seconds, and that's it. The strokes are done. Um, and what I'm going to do now that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start, I'm going to share with you, uh, those are the applicators, uh, examples of the applicators that we can use in massage. Uh, we can use the thumb, we can use the reinforced thumb, we can use the heel of hand, double palm, knuckles, fist, forearm or elbow. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate to you now uh, the application of, of the body mechanics uh, using all of those applicators. Um, I hope you can, uh, you can get it. Uh, I've got a model here who's getting ready and we're going to start um, showing case about how to apply those, how to deliver strokes using the proper body mechanics. And if you are interested in, in learning more, more techniques, uh, you can find the full body routine with um, using the proper body mechanics uh, and other different techniques on, on Massage Hub. Um, that's, that's the platform, that's the e-learning platform that I've created. Um, so the model is still getting ready. So I'm waiting for him. So I'm gonna stop the sharing the slides now. I'm gonna to move to the camera. I'm gonna adjust everything. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll make sure the, the angles are right so that you can see everything. Okay. So, um, Yasmin, can you see me now? Yes, can see you. Okay, okay. So it's not the slide, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So, okay. Sorry. Let me just test the camera to make sure that it's showing everything that I need to show. Okay. 
Okay, cool. So, don't forget the PPE kit, the bless that we have from due to the COVID. Always good to wear. Is my voice clear now? Yeah, can hear you perfectly. I'm under the mask. Okay, cool. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the thumb. So when I'm, I'm using the thumb, the thumb is a very, um, is a tiny applicator uh, that to be honest, I wouldn't recommend, uh, um, I would recommend minimizing where to use the thumb. Um, there is always times that we need to use it. Um, if, if it's needed, then use it. If it's not needed, um, then don't use it. Try to save your energy when it comes. To, if you're working on a, on, on a bigger muscle group on a large area, um, I would say a forearm would be a better applicator than the thumb. The thumb will help you to reach points, very uh, small points of the muscles that you can't reach with a forearm or with the elbow. So don't hold back of using the thumb, but when you use it, always try to the thumb to be straight, to be aligned with the whole arm. And when I'm delivering the stroke, I'm not pushing with the thumb. I'm pushing, the thumb is straight, I'm pushing with my body. I'm using my leg to deliver the stroke. So when I'm gonna hear, So let's say I need to go in the trapezius with my thumb. Let's say I need to go on the SEM. You need to go under the trapezius to and go deliver a stroke between the SEM and the trapezius. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my thumb straight and just go with my body. So in order to achieve it, I need the arm to be about 45 degrees in a 45 degree angle with my body. I need the shoulder to be relaxed and I lock the shoulder. And once I start moving the legs, the legs is going to push everything to deliver the stroke. I'm not pushing with the thumb. I'm just locking the thumb and keeping it aligned with the arm. Reinforced thumb, again, reinforced thumb. When you're talking about reinforced thumb, so basically I'm using a thumb as an applicator, but I'm supporting this thumb with the hand. So that should be the applicator. I'm using the right thumb, oops. The right thumb with the left hand. Where the pressure is coming from, it's coming from the left hand. It's not coming from the thumb itself. And that's why it's called reinforced thumb. It's exactly the same at this point. I don't need the thumb to be aligned with my arm because I'm not pushing with it at all. I'll, put, I'll place the thumb where I want to deliver the stroke. I'll get in a position in my, for, for instance, in, in this, to deliver this stroke, I need to start with a half horse stance, which is the first stance, and I'm gonna push with my left hand. A correction, I'm not pushing with the hand, I'm just pushing with the legs. And once I push with the legs, 
it pushes the hand. The arm is about 45 degree angle with my body. And it's supporting the thumb. And once I push with the body, the body pushes the arm, the arm pushes the hand, the hand pushes the thumb. That's the reinforced thumb. Heel of hand. Here we can get more space. When, when it comes to heel of hand, so heel of hand, I'm using the palm of the hand. I'm not using anything. I'm not pushing with the hand. I'll try to, again, keep my arm in a 45 degree angle with my body. Lock my shoulder and then get in the right stance to start and deliver the stroke. With the heel of hand, my wrist shouldn't go. I shouldn't push my wrist more than its range of movement. It should be around, again, the angle between the wrist and the arm should be around 45 degree angle as well. If I need to go lower, I'll use my knee to go lower and then deliver the stroke. Double palm, I'm gonna place my, both my hands together. Um, and the hand on the top, usually at this point, is the hand that is putting all the pressure. I'm focusing all my body weight on the hand on the top to deliver the stroke. Knuckles, if you want to use your knuckles for any, for any reason, it's the same as the heel of hand. But instead of placing my palm on the body, I'll place my knuckles on the body. Again, I'm gonna, my wrist should be relaxed, not, not strained. And I should go with the knuckles. Fist, when it comes to the fist, let's say I need to, to use the fist on the, the, I call them the mouse muscle group, which is the infraspinatus, supraspinatus, there is minor and major, beautiful muscles to work on. And let's say I'm going to work from here. The fist, you can use the fist using this direction or this direction, whatever works for you, wherever you need to be honest, it's very flexible. More importantly that you don't, don't, you, the, the wrist should always be straight, should always be aligned with the arm. The hand should always be aligned with the arm. Whether if I'm using the wrist or, yeah, when I'm, yeah, I'm using the wrist. So in this, case, for instance, I'm going to go again, the wrist is straight, the hand is aligned with the body, and I'm still pushing with only with my legs. Okay, forearm, beautiful applicator. So for the forearm, all, all, the, all the previous applicators I had all the length of my arm to reach the client. So I was able to stand up in while my legs are straight. For the forearm, because now I need to get closer to the client. So if I keep my legs straight and I push with the forearm, that will put my 
lower back that will cause me a lot of low back strain. So the better the better way to uh, to use the forearm is try to get in contact with the client with the forearm first, and then try to straighten your back. If you want to straighten your back, you will need to squat a little bit, and then once you get to a point where the arm and is around 45 degree angle with your body that's basically is going to be the best starting point for the stroke and at this point i will lean on the client to apply the pressure and then i'm going to start moving my just pushing with the rear foot and that will generate the force for the stroke Shoulders always to be relaxed. In any stroke, the shoulders always need to be relaxed. You're not using the shoulders. Elbows, again, if I'm applying pressure on the lower back with the elbow, again, I'll engage the muscle that I'm working on. Again, my leg is straight now. So now at this point, my back is, is bent very bad position and if i started to push from here i'm going to start pushing using my shoulder so if i open my leg if i widen my feet a little bit that will allow me to squat to keep my back straight and i'm going to apply the pressure only using my legs so what i'm doing now I'm not pushing with any, any muscle. What I'm doing now, I'm leaning on the client body and I'm leaning on the client gradually. I'm not leaning, I'm not putting all my body on there. Just imagine that you're falling down and the client is the only thing that can help you not to fall down. If the client disappear, if we're talking about, if we're using the body mechanics properly, if we're using our body, our body weight properly, at any point during the treatment, if the client, if this table disappeared, I shall fall down on the floor straight away. If I, if I don't fall down, that means that I'm pushing with my shoulders. Let's put it, that's the simplest way. So you need to rely on the client that he's, you're using the client as a standing support for you. You are, when you apply the pressure, you are actually throwing all your body weight on the client. Simple steps. Let's put it in simple steps. When you try to deliver any stroke, any of the strokes that we went through, first of all, engage the muscle that you're going to work with on or the muscle that you're going to start work on. Maybe, the, maybe I'm doing, let's say, forearm for the whole back. So that covers a lot of muscles in the upper back. So I'm gonna start from the QL, from the quadratus lumborum. So basically I'm gonna start from the quadratus lumborum. So I adjusted my position where I want to start using the stunts. The stunts, because now I'm gonna use the half horse stunts to be able to move forward. The half horse stunts, Usually when you use it, you've got a leading foot. The leading foot always should point where the stroke is going. If the stroke is going this way, while the, foot is facing, the leading foot is facing outward, that won't allow you to move smoothly. And it won't allow you to apply the pressure properly. So, half horse stance, leading foot pointing this direction because the, the the stroke is going in this direction okay the the rear foot is facing outwards so it it's it's facing the table exactly i'm adjusting my stance i'm engaging the muscle i'm going to start lean on the client and then i'm going to start pushing with my rear foot which will help me to deliver the stroke
Okay. So ischemic compression, if I'm working on a knot and I need to apply pressure on one point, uh, again, there are different, different approaches to work on knots. Uh, let's say we're going to apply the ischemic compression, which is applying a compression on only one point to cut the blood supply to this point. So let's say, Okay, I found the point here that I'm going to work. When, when we're talking about ischemic compression, the best stance for the ischemic compression is the whole stance, which is in a squat, your leg should be in, in a squat position, and you are allowed to go up and down smoothly without bending your back. So using the horse stance, I'm gonna get in the horse stance. I'm gonna use my elbow to work on this knot. And from here, I'm gonna just, I'm applying now, I, I shifted my weight on this point. And once I shifted my weight there, I'm gonna start just bending my knee and that will apply the pressure that I need. I don't need to push with my shoulder. I just need to lean over the client's body, bend my knee a little bit, and that will deliver the pressure that you desire. With practice, you'll be able to master it and you'll be able to deliver different levels of pressure uh, as much as you need, to be honest. Um, stretching, let's say I want to stretch the rhomboids. So for the rhomboids, I like the stretch, um, just an example, that I'm pulling the arm. So for me to pull the arm, uh, at this point here, I started with half horse stance. There is one foot, the leading foot is facing the client and the other foot is facing this direction. It's facing outwards. To, to, and what I'm doing now is I'm shifting to a Tai Chi stance. Tai Chi stance, I'm just throwing, I'm pushing with my lead foot, I'm pushing back. I'm pushing all my body weight towards against the table. So basically what happens is that it stretches all the muscles that I need. And usually the table will move. So if you want to support the table with, the, with your foot, you can. If you go for, um, yeah, if you go for a wide range of stretch, the table definitely will come with you. If you're talking, uh, if we're applying the, um, the body weight properly. Um, and that's it, to be honest. <laughs> That's, um, that's, again, that's the short version of the importance of the body, body mechanics and how to apply it properly to deliver a treatment. Um, the mask and the visor is not helping at all, but again, the, requ the new requirements, which we can't, we can't ignore. How did, you, how did you cope having that on while speaking at the same time? Uh, Oh, no, 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 no. I do it. I do it for eight hours. I'm, I'm doing it this weekend for eight hours for two days. So I have to do, deal with it. <laughs> Good practice. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So basically, that's, that's, again, that's an overview uh, about the body mechanics and how important the body mechanics is. Uh, I'm sure that it wasn't very clear because it, it requires you to see in person how you lean, you lean over the body and how you apply the pressure. So uh, I, I hope that delivered the message um, and made it clear. Um, 
during during the the two days course we go through the application of the body mechanics uh, about 14 hours of practice so basically and that's a skill again that you can use across all modalities whether it's a relaxing massage lomi lomi deep tissue trigger points stretching whatever whatever modality that can always work with it um yeah and uh, that's it I'm, I'm not sure if you have any questions about the body mechanics i i think that's the best time to go through the questions yeah i've asked if anyone has any questions so far we haven't had any any asked we've had some great responses people saying the stuff is golden thanks tama um bella oh, thank you that arm stretch looks delicious. Yes, the foot to support the massage table is important. They have some good feedback, but no questions yet. We'll give it some time and see see if anyone has anything to else to say. Okay, so I, I think uh, while waiting, um, sorry, let me just share. Uh, okay. So, screen two. Okay. Um, so the details about the course. Uh, the first the first day uh, date uh, for the course is the twenty seventh and twenty eighth of February. Uh, the structure of the course, it's about two, two hours of theory. We go uh, into more depth of, of the, uh, the theoretical part is um, more, more deep than that. And we go, uh, we use about the, re the remaining 14 hours for uh, practice, for practicing everything about the body mechanics. Um, and usually after the course, after the first day, your, your legs will burn because uh, it's, uh, it's, a new, it's a new skill. We have the habits usually to push and pull with, the, with our arms. Uh, so shifting, this, shifting this, this habit and changing it to a new habit, which is using the legs 100% of the time, that will, it won't give you a very nice time in the beginning, uh, but it's for the greater good. Um, you earn 10 CPD points with this course, and the price for the course is 249. But for urban heroes, it's uh, urban heroes usually get 10% uh, for all courses, so it will be 224 for urban heroes. And to book the space, that's the website internationalmassageeducation.com. Um, And basically those are the learnings during the course. Uh, so you will learn more about the body posture, the weight shifting, which muscles that you use to engage, it, where, that you need to engage while delivering a stroke, uh, how to use the body weight, how to avoid muscle ache, self-care practice, and you're gonna learn a full body routine that involves uh, deep tissue trigger point and stretching technique uh, for the whole body. And uh, yeah, and those are the other courses that I'm offering, which is deep tissue to your point and on-site chair massage. Um, yeah, and you still get 10% 10, 10 discount. That didn't change from the last part. Um, any, any questions that came through or everything yes. is clear? Hmm. Some questions for you. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna stop screen sharing. So, oh, you've done okay. it? Yep. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Great, so first question, is from Finn. Um, mm -hmm. Finn is asking, when feeling tired at the end of the day, how is it best to remind yourself of these pointers? Mental fatigue can be blocking your logic sometimes. Uh, so the, the key here, so the key here is the practice. Uh, again, as, as, as I mentioned, it's a, it's a, new, it's a new habit. Uh, we, have, we have our habit as a human that got limbs to use our limbs and everything. And you may, mainly we use, when we learn deep tissue or anything, we learn with our arms, but we don't learn to use it with our legs. So number one is, is, is practice. Uh, practice will lead to perfection. Uh, number two is awareness. Um, any, at any point during treatments or after the treatments or end of the day, beginning of the day, whenever you feel any pain in your body, uh, make sure again we, we do a physical job 
So it, it requires a lot of physical effort from us. Um, and our muscles, what we are trying to fix clients for, we need to fix ourselves as well. So we need to stretch a lot. Uh, whatever you feel, whenever you are in a treatment, let's say, you felt a pinching pain in the lower back. That means that the lower back is sending you a, a signal that it requires attention. The attention, you can, you can deal with it by stretch, strengthening the lower back or by stretching the lower back. One of those two. If you're engaging the lower back too much during the treatment, then stretching is the best solution for it. And if we're talking about the stretching in general, people need to stretch throughout the day to maintain their physical, their physical well-being. Uh, if we talk about us as massage therapists, I, I would say at least we need about four times to stretch at least four times a day. Uh, morning, evening, and two, days, uh, two times through, uh, throughout the day. Uh, so, but the key is the awareness. Just listen to your body. Amazing. Um, we've got a question from Ian. Any tips on transitioning from one stance to another, given the weight transfer and potentially minimizing stress on the back? Sorry, uh, sorry, can you repeat the question again? Yeah, of course. Any tips on transitioning from one stance to another, given the weight transfer, and um, to potentially minimize stress on the back? Um, the, the, the transition from one stance to another, it's all connected to how, how you're delivering the stroke. So basically, if you are, let's say, from a half horse stance, basically, and I'm moving forward, so basically all... All the, all the effort that you should be doing at this point is just pushing with the rear foot. And that will help you to, tra to that, that will help the transition from a half horse stance towards a arrow bow and back to the Tai Chi. So basically the rear foot always should be doing all the, all the work. So if I'm pushing, so let's say I'm standing facing this direction I'm delivering the stroke, I'm going forward. So basically the rear foot at this point will be the foot in the back. But when I'm coming back from the front towards the back, at this point, the rear foot will be the foot in the front. So that, that's, the, um, that's the only thing that you need to, to, to be aware of. And while I'm going back, I need to be pushing with my foot, with my front, my leading foot, I, I need to be pushing with it while just allowing my body to go back. And all of this process happens while I'm leaning on the client to apply the pressure. Amazing. Does that answer the question? <laughs> well, we'll see if, if you know. Okay, cool. <laughs> if, please, if, if it doesn't ask the question, please, please let me know. Awesome. So we just have a couple more um, mm -hmm. from Vivi. So the importance of using the legs over time, it won't cause strain on the leg joints the same as it would on the arms. Uh, it, it will. The, the, legs, uh, the legs are the biggest uh, muscle group in the, in the body. So imagine the body. I'm not sure, to be honest, about the ratio, but I would say about 40 percent uh, of the body is just muscle, uh, legs muscles. So we have two, two legs and we've got big, big chunk of muscles. Uh, so if you have any troubles with the knees, um, try to find the angle that doesn't put any pressure on this knee, uh, on, on the main knee that you have trouble with. Uh, other than that, um, all, all, the, all, the, all the movements are natural. When we're talking about the stances, so basically the stances is you place your feet in the positions where the body is moving smoothly without affecting any joints. The joints are not, uh, are not affected at all, if we're talking about the proper stance. Uh, and what you're doing is you're just placing, placing the feet in certain positions that allow this smooth, uh, this smooth movement. Awesome. Um, Okay, I think we've got one more. How mm -hmm. would you apply the ischemic compression using your body weight only when it's hard to stabilize, localize, and not or tension? Um, I, I would say, first of all, so when, when, when we're talking about the ischemic compression, so basically we're working on a knot, on a top band. Um, we, want, we, we usually don't apply the ischemic compression straight away. We locate it first. 
we locate the knot first. So basically the palpation, when you palpate before starting applying any, any type of pressure, you need to palpate and you need to understand about the, the, the palpation, the knot, which fiber, which muscle fiber it, it, it exists in, or um, yeah, and if, if you basically, yeah, you need to locate exactly the point that you need to work on and use your, your fingers. You're not applying pressure here, but you're using your fingers to palpate. Palpation represents about 50% of the solution for resolving, for basically getting rid of a knot, because you're trying to understand how this knot is affecting the muscle. Once you locate the knot, or once you locate the taut band, basically that's where you're gonna use, you're not gonna use your fingers to apply the pressure. You're gonna switch, you keep, keep your finger on the point that you need to work on, and then you can apply a, a firmer applicator like the elbows for instance and that's where you exactly go on the right point and then you apply the pressure for the ischemic compression awesome um we've got one last question how would you mm -hmm. deal with well-built clients for who, for who it doesn't matter how low your bed is is it using body weight only especially when working on the back uh, yes, using the body weight. So um, um, uh, thank you for this question because it, it reminds me of, of an important point. If, the, if you're doing a, a deep tissue treatment and a deep tissue or trigger point, it's better to have your bed lower than the level that you usually have while you're doing a relaxing because that, allow, that gives you leverage to lean, to move over the client and apply body weight. Uh, big clients, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how... Let's say, let's, let's give an example. No matter how, how the client is big, let's say a, a, a therapist who weighs 50 kg, okay? If this therapist uh, managed to put all the body weight, all the 50 kg, or at least, let's say, 20 kg on one point at the, on the client's body, can anyone take this pressure? The answer is usually no. <laughs> so it's it's very it's once you put the body weight our we weight a lot and for clients no matter how big they are if you manage to put about 40 percent of your body weight on the client's body not everyone will take it easily um and it's the the answer is body weight will be very uh, enough for you to, to deliver a proper and effective treatment. It's not about just, again, a high pressure treatment, no, an effective treatment that will help the muscles to relax. Amazing. Um, that's all for all the technical questions. Um, we do have Sandy asking, um, are your courses over Zoom or are they gonna be in person? Uh, no, it's gonna be, hopefully it's gonna be in person. So far, so currently we are, I'm teaching at London School of Massage. We're teaching in person there because education is still allowed during the lockdown. Uh, and hopefully by next year, um, I'm, I'm not offering any teaching through Zoom yet. I'm teaching one-to-one one -one, uh, tutoring even in person, uh, but I'm not teaching uh, over Zoom yet, to be honest. So hopefully uh, it's going to be in person starting from next year. Amazing. So I think we'll wrap wrap it up there. The feedback has been amazing on the on the chat and in the comments. Everyone seems to have really learned something today. So thank you so much for taking your time to do this, Tamar. Um, yes. What I will do is I will pop your details in the description of the the, the webinar stream, so mm -hmm. everyone can kind of have a look um, and be able to kind of check out your resources and check out your website over there. Oh. Um, and is there anything else you want to share with everyone before we log off? Uh, no, I would just say thank you for your time and thank, and hope you enjoy the rest of the day to relax until the 2nd of December, which a week from now, and we're going to go back to work, hopefully, as busy as we were before. Amazing. Thank right. you so much for joining right. us, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Esme, for arranging it, and thank you, everyone, for yeah. your time. You're welcome. Bye. Okay.